quarterfinals. I would like to think so, yeah. Goblins can take a little while. There's a lot of back and forth that can happen there, but I think this will be the longest, and it'll probably be the most interesting, too. Yes. Well, Goblins versus Soul Tide Delver would be my other choice. Yeah, sure. Watching Dredge versus Sneak and Show and watching Storm versus Lands, it's fun as entertainment, but it's not necessarily the most compelling magic. It is a volcanic island. For both players to get things started, it's a rather swifty spear. Glenn Jones going to get the first damage through Lissette. He's down to 19. We are underway here in our quarterfinals from Oakland. And this is a matchup where Joe does not have to play around Wasteland at all. Blue Red Delver deck can't really afford to play Wasteland. Joe has deck lists. And so that makes the land drop thing much easier. Jones with an island here. He is going to play a Ponder. Trigger the prowess on Monastery Swiss Spear. Swiss Spear, one heck of a threat in this deck. Replaced Goblin Guide, but the deck did change quite a bit too. And Goblin Guide all, always felt a little bit out of place to me in a deck that's playing with Days and Spell Pierce. So there's so many cheap spells as a consequence of playing with Treasure Cruise. Goblin Guide was a little awkward in this deck to begin with. And so Swiss Spear strikes me as a big, big upgrade. Jones going to take a long look at the ponder here, figure out where this game is going to go. Of course, when we do have updates for you guys in other matches, we will let you know just how they are going. We also have a trivia question for you for three months of premium after this game. Patrick will have a question. I will have the rules. It's simple, we promise, as Glenn does keep with his ponder. Here is another swift spear. See if this will resolve. See, Glenn does have a copy of Treasure Cruise in the grip. Gataxian Probe as well. He's setting up a pretty nice turn here. Here is an attack. This will be for three. One of those Swiss Spears is a two, three. The other one is a one, two. And Jones happy to pass the turn back. Lissette, here's a Brainstorm. And it appears as though Joe has been able to set up a Brainstorm here into a Terminus next turn. That does look to be the case. Jones is all... Glenn over here has changed his list around slightly, playing two Maydeck Pyroblasts. Normally, there's some chain lightnings or fort bolts in that flex slot, although Glenn also playing two copies of fort bolt. It's a terminus. The set will play the single white mana. Jones is going to cast a force of will, removing a blue card. That blue card is treasure cruise. Glenn pretty far away from getting a lot of cards in his graveyard. Joe wondering how many cards do you have in your hand? That is countered. No fight to be had. Interesting, because on Joe's side, you do see a copy of Force of Will in a blue card, and he said, that's fine. And didn't have to worry about days or anything. Could it have just fought the fight and decided not to. It makes you believe that maybe, as here's a Gataxian probe, he may have another copy of Terminus on top of his deck, willing to take a shot here. Here is Probe. I'll show you how to Force of Will, Vendillion Click, a Brainstorm. Make it two Vendillion Clicks, and then a Source of Plowshares. Joan's going to record all that information. Of course, two Prowess Triggers, and then he will draw a card. And now, I'm sure Glenn is aware that something like Terminus on top has to be what's going on here. It's the dead giveaway, right? He didn't have, he didn't fight over this with Force of Will? And it's not like, well, we knew what Joe drew for the turn, and he brainstormed too, so all the information right. is very clear. Joan's going to draw a card. Again, he knew what that was going to be because of Ponder. Let's say getting a little tricksky. See Jones with a brainstorm in hand. Glenn does get to hit for a lot of damage this turn, potentially. Now, it might surprise you to see main deck Pyroblast and then deck two of them there, thinking maybe they forget to miss sideboard. That's not the case. He has two main deck Pyroblasts this weekend. Actually, kind of almost feels like stealing from Joe. A little bit. And if you're expecting a lot of treasure cruises, well, main deck Pyroblast, not a bad place to be. There's the other Terminus. Can't come as much of a surprise. Although Glenn did not brainstorm last turn in search of help, so. He'll he just let that exchange happen. Yep. He could have dug aggressively there looking for a counter spell to go alongside his Power Blast and try to fight the fight. But I think with Treasure Cruise at the ready, he can try to put, trade a little bit more one for one and just let Treasure Cruise carry the day. There's a Power Blast on the Brainstorm. These players trading resources back and forth. Jones does have another copy of Treasure Cruise. He'll start his turn off by casting a Brainstorm. The set will take a look at the grip. Again, Force of Will, two Vendillion Clicks, and a Source of Plowshare is what he's looking at. Jones will add three cards. A Days Among Them. He'll have to put two back, of course. And you can see the influence that Treasure Cruise has in these games. Under normal circumstances, I think we would be uh, pretty safe declaring Joe comfortably ahead in the game after terminusing away Glenn's, jo Glenn's board. And now Glenn spending time cantripping, trying to find more threats. But with Treasure Cruise, that 
this entire matchup has shifted dramatically. Game is very different, right? Yeah. Joe's going to figure out what cards put back. Has found another copy of Pyroblast. That's a big one here. A little unsure. <laughs> it looks like he's going to rearrange the cards he puts back. He is happy with his configuration. Tell you what, though, Treasure Cruise certainly does change the dynamic of this matchup. Jones electing not to play that land in his hand, mind you. He does have Volcanic Island. There's a Plains off the top there for Lissette. Jones will untap. He will draw a card. No threat right now. Looks like he's considering playing the land at this point. There is the land. He'll pass the turn back. No rush to top out. Mm -mm. Lissette? Well, looks like he's going to go for one of these Mendelian clicks. With Caracas as a safety net. Now that's on the stack, of course. And Jones will play a Pyroblast on that. Joe not even thinking about fighting this fight. Not at all. Lissette draws his card for the turn. That might be a copy of Entreat the Angels there. The way he's drawn it, yes, sir. Miracle trigger on the stack. The question is, how much is it going to be for? Does he want to try to play around days? Jones hasn't cast one yet, after all. And what angel is mighty fine here? It's outside the bolt range. A 4-4 is pretty big, especially against this deck. I love watching Joe in action because it always feels like he's intriguing for the exact right amount based on what's in his opponent's hand. Here's a Brainstorm. Joe's going to take a look at three cards, ponder among them. Two cards will have to go back here in a moment. The question here, if you're Jones, is do you think you can beat 1-4-4? Four, four? It's going to be tough with nothing going on. I think Glenn may have found a second copy of Days. Well, things get interesting then, don't they? In which case, I think it's worth the fight. We'll find out momentarily. I don't have a lot of experience with Delver decks in Legacy. I did a... Uh, Draft it in some vintage rich history drafts. I like this Delver deck a lot. It is, it is juiced with power. Yeah. I thought the old blue-red Delver decks had a lot of inconsistencies, some not very effective parts, but this is pure velocity, pure gasoline here. You know, eventually the old Delver decks, they would run out of gas eventually. Yeah. They get locked up or what have you. This one just, it can stay up with cards with you. Due to Treasure Cruise and all these cantrips, it can play just a certain kind of bobbing and weaving game. This deck is... Going to be here for a while, I think, Patrick. I think so, too. A lengthy brainstorm here for Jones. It is a difficult decision if he wants to fight over this or not. Of course, one of these cards is going to be his draw step next turn, too. So he's really, he's really got to figure out where these things are going to go and what's going to happen. Nothing easy about brainstorming. We know that. Brainstorm going to resolve. So will Entreat. There is an angel token. And Glenn either unable to or unwilling to fight the fight. So no attacks here for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joe being a little stubborn, but you know what? Joe being Joe. We love the dude anyway. Glenn wants to take a look at the graveyard here. Joe does have access to Snapcaster Mage in his deck, one of them. So we'll see if anything else happens here in Glenn's end step. The answer is no. He will draw a card, however. Of course, he does know what that is since he did put it back from Brainstorm. This is a fetch land in case he doesn't want to draw the next card. And it looks like he does not. So he will sacrifice that, go down to 16, search up a land. And I think we're going to open up with Ancestral Recall here. It's not the worst place to open things up. That's for sure. Expert commentary, I know. Yeah. Still got it, buddy. Yeah, thank you. And I'm curious to see if Joe is willing to force a will this. He has force a will plus Vendillion Cliff left in his hand. Bunch of mana here. Hmm. So Glenn's trying to do this and leave enough of his graveyard intact to be able to fire off a second one. It's a little interesting. 
think the thought process here is this is the full blown take the turn off cash treasure coups so that he can set up another one. Yeah. And the next one's on the cheap because, hey, if you hit him, he goes down to 12 and he's probably okay with that. There's also not a lot of development to be done this turn in the face of Joe's angel. You know, if he draws a Swiss spear, can't even attack. Mm -hmm. And if he draws any other creature, Joe can just sit back with his angel on defense. So it makes a lot of sense to just take this turn off, let Joe attack, and then start leveraging your resources next turn. And then he can get busy. Scalding turn the draw. It's an attack for four. Jones is down to 12. It's an even game. Lissette may have some interest in just casting this Vendillion click now while Jones is tapped out. He will play a land. Well, the click means, if you cast the click, that means Force of Will is offline. Though Glenn does not know that. Here is a click. Yep, there's a daze. Interesting. Joe going to sacrifice Scalding Tarn. So the sacrifice is on the stack. This is a daze. Pick up the island. It's an interesting game of back and forth we have. Glenn looks like he wants him to tap out for the Caracas so that he can probably kill it off with some sort of burn spell. Or he's got nothing else to do with these dazes, but sure. if he's trying to set up a second treasure cruise, the cost of bouncing lands back to his high hand is fairly high mm -hmm. because it means he can't fire back with that much the next turn. Go to target Jones. There's the grip. The grip stinks. Yep. It makes sense now. The treasure cruise was horrible. So I imagine we're going to see treasure cruise going to the bottom here. Yeah. See the hand there? Three lands and a swift spear. A second to write down those cards. Mystery card there for Jones. It all makes more sense now. And now Glenn facing a two turn clock. Yep. Time to draw a card. Gotta respect the miracle beat downs. Perhaps it's time to get Swifty. Yes. Swifty. Be a great window to kill Vendillion Click if he can. Here's a brainstorm. It's going to be an attempt. Joe will take a look at the hand. This has, I think this has to be Lightning Bolt or Fork Bolt for Glenn to stay in the game. I think it's very important at this point. There's a Fork Bolt. That's a big deal. Well, two cards are going to have to go back. Looks like he does have a Fetch Land too, which is also a big deal. Yep, gets to mitigate a little bit of this Flood. There's Scalding Tarn. Down to 11. Volcanic going to come into play. He already knew it was there. Shuffle up. Fork Bolt does a nice job here. One to the Fendillion Click. One to you. Trigger Prowess. Get some damage in. It's a tie game yet again. 11-11. Doesn't really feel like it's tied. Pretty big graveyard here for Jones, too, if he's able to peel off a treasure cruise. For sure, yeah. Now the one that got sent to the bottom by the click is shuffled back in. There's Fork Bolt, one and one. Well, so that's going to go down to 10, Trigger Prowess. It's a three power creature now. Brainstorm and Fork Bolt where the spells cast. So some damage dealt. And an interesting game. And this is the value of treasure cruise here. Again, under normal circumstances, I think Glenn would just be out of the game. I do, too. The center of planes for the turn. And that draw may not seem all that great, but it allows him to actually play Source of Postures and Force Will in the same turn. And Glenn's used a lot of dazes, so mm -hmm. I think Joe can be pretty confident that he's good to go. And Joe actually hanging back on defense this turn. Doesn't have any interest in racing now. Here's a young Power Master from Jones. That'll change the game. Lissette is going to hard cast a force will. Jones knows it's there, so away that goes. And pass it back. So Lissette will draw. It's a Sensei's Divine Top. That's a very big draw. Although Joe had no way to shuffle, mm -hmm. still, I'm sure, a draw he's happy to take. I'm going to figure out how he wants to spin it. 
And take a look at the top three here. Counter spells one. Flood of Strand is two. Mystery card number three. Looks like it may be a Snapcaster. I feel like Joe can now go on the offensive. There's enough gas in the reserves there that even if Glenn Joe does something very good, Joe can draw a card with the top and find the answer that he needs. Joe does resolve his top there. There's a sword to clear out the Swift Spear. Jones will gain a life there, go up to 12, but the Entreat, still good damage. Couple of Delvers now, interesting. Each one gonna be on the stack here, as yeah. Joe may have a response, so he's gonna draw a card, cast a counter spell on one. The other one looks like it's gonna resolve. Now it'll be Jones' turn. I think Glenn playing at, playing at a pretty loose speed here because I think he knows he's pretty much done for this game. This game's not looking great now. But Joe still wants to keep it tight, you know? Randolph Gill currently up a game here with Storm over Zach Wong playing Lance. Not much of a surprise there. Yep, this is where Lance gets a chance to catch up. Those sphere resistances, those shots of the voids, like, it gives him some game. Take a look at the top card. It's a land, and Glenn Jones is going to concede the game. Joe Lissette does win game number one here over Glenn Jones. Miracles up a game over Blue Red Delver. We'll be getting to the sideboards in just a minute. But back to the booth, we do go. You have the first question. I do. That means I've got the rules. Pretty simple. Get your Twitters open. Hashtag SAG Premium is what you're looking for. Make sure you're following at SAG Live. Patch will ask a question for three months of Star City Games Premium, likely to pertain to Grand Prix New Jersey. Two weeks away. Right? Two weeks away. It's so soon. Legacy. I'm super excited about it. My hometown, sort of. My home state, like, close to my hometown. Like fourth or fifth time you've got to go home this year? Yeah, something like that. Must be pretty nice. Well, New Jersey has an enthusiastic magic scene, and True. we're close to a lot of cities. True. So why not? Why would you not have it there? Makes a compelling argument. Again, he'll ask a question. We'll announce the one at the conclusion of our quarterfinal round. Hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you're following at SCG Live. And of course, all contests and giveaways here on SCG Live with the sole discretion of Star City Games. Twitch.tv is in no way affiliated with our contest, though we do thank them for allowing us to broadcast on their fantastic network. So, Grand Prix New Jersey is not just about the games and matches that are being played. Star City Games always tries to turn Grand Prix into events. Yep. Part of that is bringing in people sort of outside the competitive scene that add coolness to the event, and there's no easier way to do that than bringing in some artists. We have a special guest of honor flying in from England who rarely does these kind of conventions. We're very excited to have him. One of Maddox's most iconic artists, particularly known for his illustrations of lands. Can you name that artist? I think you can. And if you can, hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you're following SCG Live. We'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our quarterfinal round. Back to the match we are going to go. We will take a look at the sideboards here. We will see some ones and twos from both players here. Jones with a curse turn, a Graph Trigger's Cage, two Null Rods, a Pithy Needle, a Sulfur Elemental, two Blood Moons, two Sulfuric Vortex, and a Trickery. Two copies of Smelt, a Forked Bolt, and a Pyroblast. What do you like there? The Pyroblast, the two copies of Sulfuric Vortex, I think, are Glenn's best cards in the matchup. And the Pithy Needle as well. Pretty simple stuff. I think that's where his upgrades are. We saw Joe's sideboard last match. We'll take a look at it again here. Graph Digger's Cage, a Needle, a Static Caster, a Blood Moon. The twos are Rest in Peace, Fluster Storm, Misdirection. Then some more ones there in Pyroblast, Red Blast, Wear Terror, Venser, and a Supreme Verdict. So I'm trying to look through here and see what I like. There's not a ton. I like the additional copies of Red Blast, the Pyroblast. I think the Supreme Verdict is good in this matchup. I think Rest in Peace is a little too extreme for this kind of game. Uh, I, I don't think you want to fight it over Treasure Cruise that much. And Joe already has a bunch of Red Blasts. And I think that's probably going to be the end of the sideboarding. Oh, for the record, on Glenn's side, I'm not, I'm not opposed to bringing in the Sulfur Elemental. I know it's for the Death and Taxes matchup, but a three-power flash on Counterable Creature here I think can do some work. Okay, I can see that. I can definitely see that. It also allows you to Lightning Bolt Entreat tokens. That's a corner case thing, but it does help a little bit there. I think that's the thing that can come up. It is very corner casey, but it wouldn't surprise me if that comes up. We just saw the power of a four toughness creature and how big of a deal it plays. You think about Glenn's creatures in his deck. Swiss Bear is not really going to get to a four or five very often. Delver, of course, is a three two. And Power Mancer, you have to go wide against it and swarm it. Right. So uh, it's corner casey, and sometimes that's actually going to damage Glenn because it's going to turn them into five power attackers, yep. maybe dies faster. But I think overall, Sulfur Elemental, not really for this matchup, but probably better than some of the other cards Glenn has in his deck. Well, we'll take a look here. See how things do go. Of course, we do have updates. Randolph Gill, again, with Storm up a game against Zach Wong. We've got Joseph Moreno playing Dredge against John Betts playing Sneak and Show. No update there yet. And then Richard Liu playing Goblins. 
Jimmy De La Cruz playing Salte Delver. And we have any updates for you guys? We'll let you know. As I'm sure there is some rooting interest out there from viewers at home. Don't forget, next week an Open Series comes to Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Yeah, baby. Not exactly Cleveland, but pretty close. Close enough. I grew up an hour and 45 minutes away from there. A little drive north. I'm actually going to see Mama and Papa Bear on that Monday. Oh, awesome. Might catch a Cavs game. They're playing against the Pelicans on Monday. In fact, I'm coming uh, after Columbus. I'm flying out the following Wednesday to go out to New Jersey for a little bit of extra time. There it is. Now, my dad, from what I've been told, the tickets to the Cavs game versus the Pelicans are quite expensive. Still worth it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do some work there. Things matter. I'm very excited about New Jersey. Get to meet my new nephew for the first time. Nice. Yep. Less than a month old. Or it'll be about a month old when I get out there. Boy or girl? Boy. Nice. My sister's second boy. The fifth child, second boy. Jeez. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of those. It's a lot of them. But they're great. Glenn looks like he's going to keep. Lissette taking a look at his opening hand. There's a source of plowshares there. It's a ragtag squad, but they're a lot of fun. Rugrats. That's what I call them. Tommy and Chucky. Phil and Lil is what I'm probably missing. There's Angelica. Mm. Uh, the actual Rugrats show you're going through right now? Yeah. Tommy and Chucky. Your mind just wanders sometimes. It's all over the place. I have a, I have a deep knowledge of things that don't matter. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I go from tangent to tangent, you know, but that is really surprising that it's you got from show. here to there. Great show. It was a great show. Absolutely. An American classic. I'm not saying it wasn't. It was a great show. Cataxing for Let's see what's up. There's a mountain. There's a plane. Somebody doesn't have any blue mana. Got it. Yikes. Oh, Joe. I mean, a plane's in two sorts of plowshares can be a solid hand, but this hand needs some improvement. He is feeling it. Counterbalance adjacent. Yeah, Glenn's obviously <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and a vent, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little shaky. A little shaky. We'll draw a card off the probe. I think he picked up a copy of Swift Spear. Listen, Rome was not built in a day. Sometimes you keep these hands. They need a little bit of help, but that's okay. In comes the Swift Spear. Going to search for a volcanic island, of course. That's one of my favorite things about the probe or thoughts these effects. You get to tickle your opponent's hand and just kind of say, what are you doing? What are you keeping? Joe's draw this turn was a copy of Supreme Verdict. Sometimes you feel a little frisky. Sure. Not in the mood to mulligan. I'll snap you right off. I sympathize. I'll snap you right off. I'll, I'll peel perfect. I don't care. Two source of plot shares is pretty compelling. Peel top next turn. I'll show you. I believe Joe's draw was a supreme verdict. Correct. Which is <laughs> little ways away from that, too. <laughs> On a number of levels. Yep. Snap you right off with this keep. I don't care. <laughs> Here's a misty. Looks like Jones does have a brainstorm. Also, Force Will over there, too. May have a copy of Days. It looks like Glenn brought in one of the Null Rods, at least, to try to fight over Sensei's Divining Top. That's how good it is in the deck. People bring in things like Pithy Needle, like Null Rod, that don't have any targets, really, besides Sensei's Divining Top, because the deck is much more beatable when it does not have that card. Brainstorm going to resolve here. Prowess Trigger, of course, on the Swiss Spear, makes it into a 2-3. Couple of cards gonna go back here for Jones. Was curious if he was gonna put back the Null Rod since Joe doesn't have a top yet. But here is the attack for two. And I think that I would have. Sitting on this Null Rod all day seems like a challenge. A set. There's the mountain. Last turn back. You saw him not swords last turn because he was gonna get dazed. Yes. That's a big reason for that. Joe's, Joe's, Joe's always willing to take a hit to play around days. Now it's just a boring old attack for one. Looks like Joe's going to take this hit, too. You saw Joe's not sacrificed Misty Rainforest, so he's happy with what's on top, which looks to be a copy of Young Pyromancer. And I think that might be the reason that Glenn kept the Null Rod, because he has another Brainstorm in hand. So in case Joe ripped a the Vine Top that turn, he's got it ready to go. And if Joe misses again this turn, maybe Glenn is happy to shuffle away. Swords does resolve. Lissette misses. Jones draws. He wanted the land, too. There's a Misty. So he was happy with everything he saw from the brainstorm. Going to do a little bit of shortcutting.
three volcanic islands here. So this is kind of a small thing, but I think that I prefer if Glenn got one basic here, because the game can get to a spot where you run out dual lands and not every fetch gets every basic. For example, he's got polluted deltas that can't get his mountains. So it's always good to try to leave an extra volcanic or two in the deck if you can, because it just gives you more flexibility down the line with your fetch lands. Because if the game goes on for a really long time, it can come up. Young Pyromancer shows up. Swords of Posture is going to try to take it down. Glenn very quickly force the wills that. We'll have a trigger here, I imagine, for the elemental token. Not surprised at all to see him try to protect that. This is maybe the way he's going to try to win the game. He also knows that Joe's hand's got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So try to end this before Joe finds blue mana. Lissette did draw a source of blue mana there in Flooded Strand. I believe his hand has still all double blue spells. Well, it's a touch awkward, yes. <laughs> There's no denying that. Here's an attack for three. Lissette's down to 13. Glenn's is really trying to hope that Joe doesn't draw Another source of mana. You see the counterbalance, the supreme verdict. Jace as well. Now, the one card that Jones doesn't know about is supreme verdict. Yeah, he has no idea that's in Joe's hand right now. So how to move forward? Because, you know, there's a world right where you just want to shove in with young Pyromancer, do some sweet stuff. There's a null rod. Pass turn back. The set will draw a card. We're doing it. Okay. Glenn can't be too upset here because <laughs> Joe did miss for a while. Joe is pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. And now we get to see this hand in action because there's a lot to like. Oh, yeah. Vents are in there too. Counterspell. Snap you right off with that keep. Well, the two sorts of plot shares kept his head above water for a while. It's true. He missed his, he even missed his third land drop altogether. It's not like he, he hit land number three on turn three. Hard to argue Joe got too lucky here. It's not like he went blue source, blue source on his first two draws. I don't think he really got that lucky, honestly. I think the yeah. keep's fine. Quick update for you guys here. Jimmy Dela Cruz with Soltai Delver destroyed goblins. Big surprise. Man! <laughs> do, do nothing. Come on! <laughs> goblins! Look, man, I'm a realist. Okay? I want to see it win, but it didn't. If that matchup's, if that matchup's not good, you got to retire that deck. And Joseph Moreno with Dredge 2-0 over Sneak and Show. That's what you thought was going to happen. Yeah, I like Dredge in the matchup. Anything can happen, but I think Dredge is a little bit steadier. And Cabal Therapy is a beating in that matchup, too. Four mana, Supreme Verdict can't counter that one. And I wonder if Glenn went, made too much of an effort to just clutch this Null Rod for forever. He gave up some speed, and he gave up a different card that he could have had in, in, in lieu of what he has in his hand right now because he could have brainstormed away the Null Rod against an opponent with no Divining Top. Confirmed no Divining Top. Mm -hmm. Well, the nice thing here is that Divining Top's not going to do anything for the rest of the game. I guess we're going to go for a cruise, it looks like, here. Looks like it's going to be a one-mana cruise. Beep, beep. Is that the... That's a, what kind of sound does a barge make? Burr. It's not really a card, yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm. Like I said, I've got a knowledge of things that don't matter. Right. It's not really a car, right? It's a, it's like a boat. Yeah, yeah. A barge is a boat. That's correct. I'm saying the artwork on Treasure Cruise. You say, don't be like this. You know what I Here's an attack for one. The set is down to ten. Let's see what Joe has here. Counterbalance. Uh huh. Jones does have a copy of Pyroblast. And this is like such a weird spot because you know, th it's weird because like this card doesn't actually really do anything mm -hmm. because you know there's no top in play and he has a null rod to make sure that doesn't really do very much. His only fear is really brainstorm putting something on top. But Joe has red and white mana, so he doesn't have to even worry about brainstorm. But it's like, oh man, naked counterbalance. He could just randomly just counter my stuff. So I might want to counter this. And there isn't that much to really pyroblast in the matchup. Yep. Though Glenn does know that his hand is full of blue cards, so there are a lot of pyroblast targets from the probe earlier. Yep. So it is a, it's a really weird situation as Joe does peel another blue source. There's a Scalding Tarn. Counterbalance in play when your defense is a Pyroblast is really dangerous to let resolve because Joe's going to be able to have a lot of ones on the top of his deck just randomly. Also, if he has Brainstorm, he can engineer it anyway. Yeah. So even with the Null Rod in play, I still think it's worth the fight over Counterbalance. I think Treasure Cruise may have been the draw there. Sure, just Ancestral again, why not? Yeah, it was a cruise. A little surprised he didn't cast it. 
Well, I'm surprised. I'm surprised he didn't just lightning bolt on the main phase there. Must be up to something. Uh, maybe yeah. he wants to save it for a Vendillion click, but maybe the Jace in Joe's hand. But miracle. He's giving up some points of damage. Now, if he did cruise that turn, we would have taken it all of his mana. Mm -hmm. But we've seen him do that before. Well, I would have been happy to bolt on the main phase there just because it's it's out of your hand. It's an extra point of damage because you're connecting with the Swift Spear. And it sets up a cheaper treasure cruise the following turn. Sure. The question is, how much does Joe want to treat for? Last game, we saw him treat for just one. This time he's going to do it for two. Jones is looking at a force of will. And this might be part of the reason he didn't trash treasure trues either, is because that's his only other blue card for the force wolves in his hand. So there's definitely some thinking behind this. Yep. If you're Jones, though, you got to get this game over with. It is, co it is collapsing. I mean, he's, he's running out of time here. Time to draw a card. Didn't get a great another copy of Nullrod. Yeah, sweet. I guess it's a prowess trigger. <laughs> it's also a card to put back with Brainstorm if he draws one, but. I don't know if he wants to wait for that or not. It's really tough. There's an attack. Just going to deal one again. I'm a little more conservative than I'd like in this situation. Here's a top. The old brick. It feels like Glenn's gone, missed some spots here to maybe get in a couple of points of damage. Yeah, it's just, and th you know, then this card comes into play. There are a healthy amount of ones in Joe's deck. We've talked about the brainstorm interaction. So you kind of, it almost feels like you want to resolve the ones when you can. Jones is looking at a copy of Pyroblast right now. Does he want to use Pyroblast on this or something else? He knows about the Venser that's in Joe's hand. I think there's a Jace over there too that he knows about. You know, he's looking at the paper from the probe that was on turn one. It's not an easy spot. But I do believe this is Joe's whole turn, one way or the other. Yep. Yeah. But you also, Glenn doesn't know that for sure. Yeah. Because he sees the blue man out there from the Scalding Tarn, and he said, well, if he ripped the land, he could play another double blue spell. Or if he ripped a Snapcaster Mage, then yeah. he can Snapcaster Plow me, and that's horrible. Yep. A lot of dangerous stuff going on here. There's a lot to think about. That's in. Jones will draw. It's like a taxi and probe. That's a good way to see exactly what's going on. News alert, that card's good. Trigger this. Okay, Tundra. <laughs> Sees the coast is clear. That's Here's a very, that's a very Glenn Jones pump <laughs> of the fist. Here's the grip. Counterspell, Venser, Jace, and a top. Of course, we'll trigger Prowess on the Swift Spear, and he will get to Cantrip. So that's a hand that could provide no defense. Mm -hmm. And there's no help coming on the top of the deck, although Joe can shuffle with the Tarn, get another look at it. Didn't get a great look at Jones's draw. I think it might be a Swiss beer. <laughs> Glenn bucking up in his chair a little bit here. Ha ha. Maybe I can get you dead this turn. Got to sacrifice. So I'm curious here, in response to the counterbalance, in response to the fetch land, if Glenn is supposed to empty out this Pyroblast and this Bolt. I want to, yeah. Is clear. I want to nug him. Get you. Yep. Because now it's six damage. And this should this should just be lethal. Right. This yeah. looks this looks lethal. And now he's gonna kill that. That'll trigger this. Because bolt's gonna resolve. All these cards are gonna resolve. It's seven pound. It's yep. seven points. Doesn't matter. if Swiss Spear resolves, and that's gonna do it. So Glenn Jones gonna tie it up here against Joe Lissette. Blue Red Delver and Miracles going to a third game. The counterbalance. If there was a one on top, Glenn may not get back into that game. Yeah. It's it's scary. It's so scary when you're playing against that card, all the crazy things it can do. But he made it out alive. And we'll see what happens here in the third and final game. I could watch this matchup for a little while. It, it's a lot of fun, actually, the back and forth. Most Miracles versus Delver games are a lot of fun. They all have their different characteristics, but I think the games are generally interactive and swingy. There's a lot going on, a lot of nuance. Randolph Gill 2 0. Storm does take down lands. Not much of a surprise there. So we've got three players through, one to go, and it's this match right here. The dream matchup. Yeah. For If you're Storm, that's the dream matchup. Oh, yeah. I feel so bad for goblins. Hey, I'm used to it. I'm really, I'm legitimately upset about this. I thought, you know, 
Goblins is probably going to win the top eight matchup. Shipping up for a top four matchup against Storm, which is bad, but maybe this person has some Thalia's on the sideboard or some action for the matchup. And then we could be looking at, you know, how sweet would Goblins versus Miracles be in That's a in dream final. true right You know there. what I mean? Yeah. And said, freaking Tarmacoif does it again. Yeah, instead, reality. Yep. A real shame. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got news for you, man. I'm really used to it. No, I, I know. <laughs> I know you're used to it. Doesn't change the disappointment. That, hey, that's fair. That's fair. It's just, you know, at this point, it just kind of is what it is. One of these days, the Gabos will get some new cards, and they will be unstoppable. I just don't know when that's going to be. Hopefully soon, though. That'd be nice. When Legacy was first kind of getting on the map and Goblins was the deck, which it was for a couple of years there in the mid-2000s, my buddies and I, we used to joke that I just don't believe that the card pool that's this large with so many powerful cards, that this can be the most powerful thing to be doing. That just oh, doesn't... But it, oh, but it was. That just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but it was. But it was for a little while. And it was so sweet that it was. And now it feels like we live in the reality of this is just not even close to the best thing you can be doing in the format. Well, it's a touch embarrassing now. No doubt about it. A lot of one twos got printed too, which is not good. <laughs> one twos are not good for goblins. <laughs> definitely. Lackey got a lot worse. It's definitely true. <laughs> There's a lot of, yeah, even even old Swifty yeah. is in the way blocking one, the road. Yeah, what the heck's that thing doing there? Look, they took all the fun away. I'll get over it one day. It's just not gonna be today. Yep. Again, we've got in our semifinals, Randolph Gill playing Storm, going to go against Jimmy De La Cruz playing Delver, Soltai Delver, that is. And then whoever wins this match, well, Dredge is on the other side. Good showing for Dredge this tournament. For sure. For sure. Almost had, runs. Almost had two in the top eight. One in the top four. Yep. Pretty diverse top eight here for Legacy. Absolutely. Not really that much treasure cruising going on at the end of the day. I think there's two decks again. Yeah, Dela Cruz has it, I assume. Dela Cruz and Glenn. Yep. I think that's it. Looks like eight of them. Yep. Same, kind of the same numbers we had in Minneapolis. I think we had two decks each packing four. It's a good spot to be. Powerful stuff. I hope the community eventually settles down with its reaction anytime a new card comes in that makes people build their deck differently or maybe evaluate. Magic's sweet. New stuff is sweet. Treasure Cruise is stupid. You know what's stupid? Brainstorm is stupid, but we've gotten used to it. Life will go on. <laughs> Wasteland is stupid. We've gotten used to it. Life will go on. Force of Will is fun. Force of Will. It's, Force of Will is stupid, but definitely necessary to keep the, the, so, format, yeah. the format glued together. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Glenn drew a second null rod during the game. A funny joke. He said it doesn't do anything. Well, what's ironic is you could argue the first one didn't do anything either. Yeah, it didn't do a lot. So, <laughs> But whatever, Glenn. <laughs> it was a prowess trigger if you ever wanted it. That's true. You can have it anytime you'd like. Yeah. Looks like both players keeping their hand. Joe going to start with the Caracas into a top. That will resolve. Joan's going to draw a card. There's a Delver of Secrets. And we will go back Joe's way. See if he wants to spin now, or if he'll just take a draw set. Looks like he'll take a draw. There's Nared Mesa. You saw Joe a little, a little unsure of what land he should lead off with, because he does have two kinds of counterbalance in his hand. Pyroblast will be the reveal. Well, he wants to lead with not his fetch land, so he can cast the Divine Top and lead the fetch land for later. He also knows there's some possibility that whatever land he doesn't play gets shuffled away at some point. The non-basic land is a free roll against Glenn, and he has Krakus in his own deck, so... It's a small thing, but over the course of tournaments, these little decisions do add up to wins and losses. And it's act for three from the Insult Aberration. The well, set's down to 17. This is a ponder post-combat. That's going to resolve. So take a look at the top three. Cataxian Probe among them. Also a Lightning Bolt too. Third card looks to be a Pyroblast, so a bunch of goodies there. Let's see if Jones wants to keep them or not. Decisions, decisions here for Blue Red Delver. Looks like we see one of these in top eight all the time. It feels like it's been that way since New Jersey. Yeah. 
There's no denying this deck is super good. And if you are looking to maximize Treasure Cruise, I think this is the way to do it. Cataxian Probe. Get a little look ski poo. Well, Set's going to reveal his planes. Supreme Verdict. Red Elemental Blast, then two copies of Counterbalance. So Jones will have to worry about those cards moving forward. Although, again, another hand that's light on blue mana and in need of a lot of blue mana. Jones will draw his card from the probe. There's another Pyroblast. I like that this deck has so many of that effect. I wonder how they were in his main deck, but he also has the ability to kind of shuffle them away with Brainstorm and stuff, so... I'm guessing if he's in the top eight, they were probably really good for yeah, him. Yeah, chances That's are. That's how these kind of cards work. Chances are. I'm gonna spin the top here, we'll set. Look at a top and an island among the cards. Time to draw. Set draws an island. He will deploy that. Seems like that Arid Mason may be reserved here for Volcanic Island. It seems like the one he needs to get. He needs double blue. He's got a second white source in hand. He also needs red mana. Joe's going to sacrifice Wooded Foothills on his upkeep. But Joe doesn't really want to just play his spells into counter spells. I think he would rather just sit here with his top, take some licks, and try to set up a good hand. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes to get that, uh, that counterbalance through. Yeah. But if he casts the counterbalance there, you know, he has to shuffle away his fetch land, which is really valuable with his divine top. There's a good chance it doesn't resolve. And Joe just doesn't want to take those kind of risks. So Jones will be drawing card in a second here. He does have three cards in his graveyard, working his way towards Treasure Cruise. Mystery card coming. Didn't get a great look. Looks like it may have been a Swifty. See young Pyromancer in the grip. Pluto Delta as well. Start by playing the land. Here's an attack for three in the air. Unless that's going to sacrifice that Arid Mesa. I believe we have a Volcanic Island incoming here. And I think we're going to see a Red Elemental Blast on this Insectile Apparition. And I think we'll probably see Glenn let that go. Yep. And move on with life. But the Treasure Cruise in hand, he's not going to fight... You know, he's not going to fight big over small stuff. Mm -hmm. Bingo. And Delver goes away. Another card in the graveyard for Cruz, mind you. Yep. Treasure Cruz puts so much pressure on Joe. Uh, I feel like the Miracles matchup has gotten a lot different. Yeah. Against these Delver decks. That's why I was surprised when we saw Joe to start round five when we saw his deck list. Didn't see much change. Yeah. That's why I was, I was a little surprised by that. One of the things I was really looking forward to when I found out Joe was playing this weekend was, all right, you know, he's probably got some, some spice to let's beat see, these Treasure Cruise decks. Let's see your adaptation. Yeah. And it's pretty much the same stuff. And to his credit, he is here in the top eight. Ooh, the Static Caster. Aha. Pretty oh. good against Young Pyromancer. A little smirk on Joe's face there. Don't forget, though, the Static Caster is blue mm -hmm. for Pyroblast. Joe will draw a card. It is a Static Caster. Here's a Plains. Does he want to try to cast this now? These Pyroblasts are going to be a nightmare for Joe this game. Yep. It's the upkeep. It's a Static Caster. And it's probably a Red Blast. Yeah. Pyroblast says, get that thing out of here. There's an Elemental Token. Now, the interesting thing about Young Pyromancer is that Jones will probably not extend all that much, but... He doesn't have to extend a lot. He just gets to play a normal game of Magic, right? It's purely incidental. If he decides he wants to start pushing, he can start firing off his, his cantrips and, and what have you a little bit more aggressively. But he can also just clock Joe for a couple points of damage every turn. And if Joe ever tries to make a move, well, you counter as you would normally. And you make another token for your trouble. You have to figure out what the right amount of cards is to play to force Joe to cast a Supreme Verdict. Yeah. How many elementals is enough to make him do it? Because that takes up his entire turn as it stands right now. But I think people sometimes in this matchup go a little too ballistic trying to make as many tokens as possible. Especially against a deck that can just set up Terminus and wipe everything away. I think you're better served just kind of clocking as you go. And uh, as a matter of course, you'll generate more tokens because you'll just be casting random spells, treasure cruises and cantrips and so forth. Two mana here. Beep, beep. Gonna spin its top here. Take a look at a brainstorm among other cards. The 
This is the big heavy hitter now in Legacy. The new kid on the block. Three cards coming here for Jones. Lightning Bolt among them. Looks like a lot of red cards found. Four techs, jeez. <laughs> That'll change the game. Here's an attack for two. Of course, the other tokens are summoning sick at this point. Lissette's going to untap and draw. He knows what that card is. It's a copy of Brainstorm. Might be time to catch in that Supreme Verdict now. But he's got to clutch this. I mean, he's only got the one, mm -hmm. you know? And this is part of what Treasure Cruise does. Joe could just trade one for one in, in his old structure. He had a couple one ofs like the Staticaster or the Supreme Verdict that would just lock the door. But now that his opponent's regularly drawing three cards, these big blows, you know, the Delver decks can sustain this sort of stuff. They can take these kind of hits. And look at Glenn's hand. Even if Joe has Supreme Verdict, Glenn gets a follow up with Swiss Spear Sulfuric Vortex or Vortex with Pyroblast left mm -hmm. over. Depending on if he draws on land or not, it's a good yeah. turn. Here's a counterbalance. I'd be surprised if he doesn't fight after, over this. Yep. Plus, it's not some another token. Yeah. It's hard to say no. That's what I'm saying, that there's no need to be that aggressive with Young Pyromancer, because as a matter of course, things like this are just going to happen. There's a Pyroblast. I mean, Glenn's hand is just, it's completely loaded. Even Supreme Verdict doesn't really matter. And Joe's in a position where he almost certainly has to just cast it next turn because he's facing five points of damage right now. Mm -hmm. Well, even though things are looking great here for Jones, there's still that top out there. And there's still those two mana, both of which are white. So a Terminus could come out of nowhere. Another Pyroblast. It's interesting. I, there's a world that exists, right, where Glenn could just go Swiss Spear, Swiss Spear, spells, spells, try to kill you. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One of them's a bolt. Seems like he, an unnecessary risk with his hand being as good as it is. Yeah, you know, it's like there's a world that exists where he, you know, I could just shove in. I can just kill you. He's not going to do that. Joe's going to spin the top. Just a boring attack for five. He does have a wear tear. So we can answer the Vortex. Yep. So that's going to take five. But he's getting hit from so many angles right now. There is the Vortex. That'll be on the stack. And now even if Joe says, all right, well, I'll untap, I'll Supreme Verdict, I'll, you know, get your Vortex off the table with the Wear Tear. He's facing down two Swiss Spears and a bunch of spells. And spells, and yeah. <laughs> The fact that you can keep coming in waves is what's important yep. here. Now, the thing is, he wouldn't be able to come in waves if counterbalance plus top was in play. But he's never, he never able, let him get there. Glenn's been able to fight over it. He's had yeah. Null Rod for Divining Top at, ver at various points in game two, and he's had Pyroblast to keep counterbalance off the table in this game. Yeah. The second to reorganize the deck here. Looks like he's going to draw the copy of Wear and Tear. He'll have to take two. He's down to seven. and draw a copy of wear and tear. There is the wear. <laughs> Excuse me, the tear. I take it all back. I'll take care of that. Joe gonna draw a card. It's a land on top. I believe a fetch land, actually. Yeah, this allows him to get his fourth land and cast the Supreme Predict mm -hmm. this turn. But the entire pacing of this game is all in Glenn's favor. He's set the tone for everything that Joe's had to do. Exactly. He's been initiating the action while drawing cards. Mm -hmm. And Joe's been forced to just c try to keep up with the board. And Glenn has five cards in his hand left over. And Glenn can't untap fast enough because he's got another Swiss Spirit. He can easily deal six points of damage, bolt you, crush you. And that is going to do it. Glenn Jones is going to win this match over Joe Lissette. Two games to one. Blue Red Delver takes down Miracles. Jones is going to move on to play against Joseph Moreno playing Dredge. We're going to stick with him. It's an impressive win there for Blue Red Delver. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of this matchup over the last couple of weeks. Not just Blue Red Delver, but all the iterations. And I, I think Miracles needs to go back to the drawing board to some extent in this matchup because before I felt if you had some Swords of Blasters, a couple other removal spells, 
you had inevitability. It was guaranteed that if you got out of the first couple turns, okay. And you had, you know, a supreme verdict and a couple other good, powerful cards in your sideboard, you would carry the day. But with Treasure Cruise, you saw Glenn was able to just keep pushing, just keep pushing through all of Joe's one for ones while still clocking them pretty quickly. And I don't think the Miracles deck has adapted to how much different these Delver decks are now. The thing about Miracles that we saw last week in the finals main deck copies Rest in Peace, Helmet Awakening. And stuff like that. I mean, you might have to make those large shakeups now. It's, the, I mean, the deck is, the Miracles deck is so fidgety. You know, there's all these 